Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind let each esteem other better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Now you had to wonder, what is causing Paul to say this thing? And what did he mean by the mind of Christ? Especially since he is saying that this mind should be in us, which was in Christ Jesus. So to understand what mind was in Christ Jesus, we had to read the next few verses. Um, verses 6, uh, eight, 7, 8, and 9. And what we, when we see these, since these are very familiar, I'm not going to uh, read all of those verses, but what you can see is that it says that Jesus, who was equal with God, who was in the form of God and equal with God, made himself of no reputation. That means he took away his glory and his position and power, or put it aside, the, his position and power uh, of being equal with God and made himself of no reputation and humbled himself. And so if you think about how he humbled himself, right? So he brought himself down from being equal with God put that position and power aside and took on the form of a servant. And he came to the earth and not only did he come as a human being, which was itself a humbling, he reduced himself to also come as a servant, a, a, no, uh, what you might say a nobody on the earth. And then not only did he do that, he subjected himself to being tried by people that he created and people that he loved and accused and mocked. And not only did he do that, he was obedient to die. Um, and not only he, did he do that, be subject to death, which was very humiliating in itself, and on top of all the things that he experienced thus far. And, and not only did he do that, he went to the cross, which was probably one of the most humiliating for forms of death devised by man. And so it was so uh, humiliating and painful and torturous that the Roman, even the cruel Roman government did away with it um, a few years after Christ. So you can understand that this was the mind of Christ. What did he see? What made him do that? Right? And, and that's what we have to understand. And that's what Paul is saying. That this same mind, whatever caused him, drove him to do this, is what he is asking us to be like. And that's why he said, don't do anything in strife or for your own self-propagation. Don't do anything that will raise yourself up. But every man, look at others better than themselves. Esteem them better than themselves. And don't look on your own things, but on the things of others. And then he says, let this mind be in you. I mean, if you think about what Christ went through, like um, I was reading uh, Psalm 69. If you can turn with me real quick. That whole psalm is a prophetic psalm, but I hadn't uh, read it as closely before and you can see the whole psalm, you can read that later. You can see the anguish and agony and sorrow that Christ went through. So it's not like, you know, he was, he was his man of steel, his mind of uh, this bulletproof mind that was not subject to, you know, um, pain and suffering, right? We know that in the Gospels. But if you read the psalm, you re can really go inside the mind of Christ the agony that he endured when he went through uh, the pain, uh, the death on the cross, right? And it says, save me, O God, for the waters are come into my soul. I sink in deep mire where there is no standing. I come into deep waters where the floods overflow me. I am weary of my crying. My throat is dried. My eyes 
fail while I wait for my God. This is Jesus saying through David um, who he came as a descendant of, right? And then uh, we know it's a messianic psalm and you return to verse 21. They gave me also gall for my meat and my, in my thirst they gave me vinegar to drink. You know that this very thing happened to Jesus, right? So the, what really struck me was verse 19 and 20. Thou has known my reproach and my shame and my dishonor. Mine adversaries are all before thee. Reproach, now pay attention to verse 20. Reproach has broken my heart, and I am full of heaviness, and I looked for some to take pity, but there was none. And for comforters, but I found none. This is the God of all the earth. This is the Lord of Lords, King of Kings, who created every single thing that we see with the word of his mouth. This same Jesus, who rules from the throne of his glory, was brought to such a low point that he is crying out thousands of years that before it happened, showing us an insight into the mind that was in him, the pain and agony that he suffered while he was on the cross. He's saying, reproach, this is my Jesus, your Jesus. He's saying, reproach has broken my heart. It broke his heart. And he was full of heaviness. And he looked for people. He looked at his disciples. They all fled. He looked for the people that followed him for three and a half years. They all left him. He looked for some to take pity. Verse 20 in Psalm 69. But there was none. And he looked for comforters. I found none. Could there be anybody that could comfort him in his grief? No, but it was not possible because he came to die for all those people, even his persecutors. So now as we think about this, understand that what made him endure that and what made him not call down the angels of God to save him from that brokenness, from that situation. And that was the love that he had toward us. The, the mercy that he saw that unless he did that, we would be condemned forever. He saw you and me. He saw the people in this world that has never heard of him. He saw the people in this world that curse him when they hear his name. And he saw that and broke his heart even more than the rejection and reproach and, and insult that he had to face. And, and the and the loneliness that he had to face on the cross, even from God the Father, whom he loved so much. This mind of Christ is what Paul is saying that we should have in us, no matter what happens or what we face. This mind of Christ is what Paul is encouraging us to have. And now, turn with me to Acts back in our study of the book of Acts, as we have been studying through the first five chapters, we come to a very famous person, Acts chapter 6 and chapter 6 and 7. As Justin has very, very uh, elegantly uh, put before us, the call we have, the same call that the apostles Peter and John said, that they counted themselves Worthy, They rejoiced because they were counted worthy to endure suffering for his name's sake. This is that mind of Christ that I was talking about. And so we can see a personification of that in the story of Stephen. In Acts chapter 6 and 7, you can see, I mean, his life was so short. There is very little said about him except for these two chapters. But out of a, a book with 28 chapters, two whole chapters are dedicated to this man of God, who, who did not have a great position or privilege in, in that church. He was called to wait on tables. He was called to do something that the apostles did not have time for. And yet, he was meek but bold. He, he was uh, facing death, but he did not back down from his call. 
And you can see, as the people that accused him came at him, and they, were made, they brought people to uh, bring false accusations against him, and, and accused him of things that he had never said or done, but still he kept on the path that he was. This is the mind of Christ, that you esteem others. He loved the people that persecuted him. And that's what kept him going. Even uh, in verse 15 of chapter 6, all that sat in the council as they were accusing, they looked down on him carefully and saw his face. And they saw as it had been the face of an angel. His face shone brightly and they saw there was something different about him. But that did not change or deter from their path to persecution. They kept attacking him and he kept going. And he gave the speech in all of chapter 7. If you take time to read it, uh, it's an incredible speech and insight that pulls together all the Old Testament stories that are relevant and brought it to their attention and said, you are no different than the people that persecuted the Old Testament saints that you, came to, you claim to worship. So, so this, uh, uh, this reminder is what I am asking you to pay attention to. The same call that Paul said, let this mind be in you that was in Christ. So even though his face shone as an angel, sometimes when people look at us, you know, we look like a Christian, right? We act like a Christian. The people might say there is something different about that person. But until we are go into the depths of agony, we might not be tested fully. Will people see that same face on you when they are screaming at you with accusations that were uncalled for? Will they see that same attitude from you when, when they are taking up stones to kill you? Will they see that same mind that was in Christ that when you are lonely and reproached and left uh, uh, to die or taken away from you things that, that were rightfully yours, when they were taken away from you, will the same mind that was in Christ and now in Stephen be in, be in us? When I say you, in us, all of us, the things that we show others, will that be carried through in the midst of our trials? That is a question we have. And when, when we go through those kind of situations, right, we should know that God is not leaving us or abandoning us because Jesus himself said, I will always be with you until the end of the world. Until the very end of the world. That's why when Stephen, in the midst of being, uh, midst of being uh, stoned, he said in verse 55, I see the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God. Every other description in heaven has Jesus sitting down. But in this instance... Jesus saw his son being reproached and attacked and he didn't notice, he didn't come down and save him, but he was there in that moment with him and stood at the right hand of God and showed him that he loved him and he cared for him and, and strengthened his heart in the midst of his trouble. As you go through terrible trials and, and abandonment and loneliness, or whatever you might be going through, know that Jesus loves you so much that He is standing on the right hand of God to uphold you. But, but as He said, we are no different than the Master. I'm going to conclude here. We are no different than the Master. He might allow us to go through such trials. He might test our faith where we have to stand against people that accuse us for no reason. And in that time, will the mind of Christ be in us, is a question. Will we have been transformed to such a point that no matter what, we will never be shaken. We will never be shaken. And in the end, in the last moment of his life, what a, what a faithful servant, what he cried out was not for his own deliverance, but he knelt down in verse 60 of chapter 7. He knelt down, he cried with a loud voice. He didn't say, or with a whimper. He didn't say it 
you know, begrudgingly, he cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. Will this mind be in us? Will this mind be in us? That was in Christ, that was in Stephen. That not only people see our face as an angel on the outside, but when we are tested to the last core of our being, we will cry out in agony for the lives of other people and esteem other people above us. And let, may I pray that God transforms each one of us. That no matter what we go through, there's a lot of fear mongering these days in the media, amongst people. Yes, we should be careful, but we should not forget who we are. No virus can rock us from or take us away from who we are. That Know that God loves us so much that he is not going to abandon us in the midst of whatever is happening in this world. And know that God loves us so much and let this mind be in you that was in Christ. May his name be glorified.